Um, I'd like to uh, recognize for five minutes Mr. Ducano. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you to our witnesses for being here today. I welcome the opportunity uh, this hearing presents to discuss competencies and, uh, comp and skills-based hiring uh, as a concept. Um, we have seen how governments and businesses alike are looking at innovative ways to promote skills-based hiring at both the federal and local level. Um, often, businesses and employers look at a bachelor's degree as a guarantor of a certain level of literacy and uh, uh, numeracy. And uh, I've heard the word proxy, that, that a bachelor's degree is, is a proxy for uh, a certain level of, 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 uh, of, of a set of competencies. Uh, but the reality is that not every pr uh, profession or every occupation uh, requires a bachelor's degree, and we have to find other ways to, uh, we, we, we might, we have to look at ways to get past the idea of a bachelor's degree being a proxy in all cases. Now, to be clear, I'm not interested in bashing four-year degrees. Um, you know, we, we still know that uh, one of the, the, the surest ways to achieve economic mobility is, uh, is by achieving a, a high-quality bachelor's degree. Um, not all bachelor's degrees are equal. Um, but often, I, too often here in this committee room, uh, in the name of trying to appear as if one is a populist, or somehow closer with the ordinary person, or whatever that might mean, uh, that people end up uh, bashing higher education. That, that shouldn't be our message either. Um, but I, I was a former high school teacher, um, and uh, I would still recommend to students that uh, they have a four-year degree in their mind, but you don't have to achieve it all at once. It can be achieved in stackable credentials. Uh, uh, so, you know, I was a community college trustee, as I said, at Riverside Community College. Uh, and one of the programs that I supported uh, being implemented or being established was the physician assistance program at the community college level. We were the only community college west of the Mississippi River to actually have a, a physician's assistance program. And during the 90s and most of the aughts, in fact, all the way through the aughts, you could get a physician's assistance degree um, or, or a certificate or license uh, with a two-year community college program. Uh, there were some initial requirements to get into the program, uh, which mainly was about a five years of experience in a medical career uh, prior to being a program, you know, a Navy uh, a corpsman or being a medic or maybe an EMT. Um, you could satisfy it a number of different ways. Um, and interest in the program was substantial. It drew a number of students to the community college. And uh, you could earn a very, very good uh, wage, or good, not even a wage, a good salary after completing this program. To my surprise, when I came to Congress in 2013, uh, I learned that the independent accrediting body phased out the community college program and said that you have to get a master's degree. Uh, this adds substantial more uh, time in both getting your bachelor's degree and your master's degree. Uh, it left me furious uh, as a community college trustee. I had, uh, I knew from what I knew, our students were scoring just as well on the board scores as a, a, a kind of an, in, an indication of competency. Um, I'd like for anyone to, I only have about a minute left to respond uh, to uh, the, story, uh, the story I just presented to you, which it comes from my own experience. Does anyone have anything to add quickly before my time runs out? I'll add a note on the importance of community colleges as a pathway for the, the majority of our workforce because community colleges have proven to be engines of economic mobility for workers who are skilled through alternative routes. The majority of STARS actually have some college credit, and almost one out of five STARS has an associate's degree. And so this is actually a really critical pathway that we continue to invest in in this country and ensure that workers are able to translate the learnings they get in community college to earnings in the labor market. Well, well thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, you know, it's unfair because I, 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 you're not unfair, but 
unfair that I asked that question to my panel because they were looking at their backgrounds, they really didn't have a background to sort of answer my question. But I'd love it if the committee could look into this issue of credential creep, but also how is it that we see these programs eliminated? Uh, we could, that people could have achieved in two years, is it really necessary to get a master's degree in order to be a physician's assistant? I mean, could that be done? I know people getting training in the military as corpsmen and as uh, medics, who I, I wonder how much more education do they need to come out and be like a physician's <laughs> assistant or a nursing uh, or uh, you know, uh, an advanced practice nurse? I would love to. I, again, I love the fact that we're having these kind of conversations about innovation and what really does count and what, what impacts as soon as possible in our, in our society. So I would, so I would love, love if we to. could work together to get a, a, a panel, I, I, no with disrespect to this panel, but a panel that could engage this about, you know, about these independent accrediting bodies. I don't want to muck, muck, you know, muck that up, but I still think there's something wrong. Yeah. When you go from a two-year community college program to a master's program, what, what's up with that? Well, we'll have Dr. Fox uh, look into this for sure. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Really do.